Okay, so this is a short lecture on the Eilid disorder of entropion. Entropion is basically the inward rotation or the inversion of the eyelids, which cause the eyelashes to come in contact with the ocular surface. Now, the the different types of entropion are categorized according to their etiologies, and in this video, we'd like to focus on involutional entropion. Involutional entropion is the entropion developed as a result of age so the progressive decline of the normal physiology with the increase in age so we'd find this in senile patients now this can arise as a result of a few age-related changes which in combination can cause the eyelid to invert and first i'd like to us to focus on this diagram here of the eyelids and in particular the orbicularis oculi muscle here on the lower lid and we're only going to focus on the lower lid as the involution entropy is restricted only to the lower lid and this is the tarsal plate here and attached to the tarsal plate is the retractor muscle and also continuous with this is the orbital septum which also attaches to the tarsal plate Now what happens is that the preceptal region of the orbicularis oculi muscle overrides with the pretarsal region upon lid closure. This causes the lower portion of the lids to turn away from the globe and the outer portion to turn inwards and inverts. And secondly what can happen is with age is the atrophy and thinning of the tarsus and cantal tendons. This leads to something called lid laxity where the lids lose uh, their elastic properties and a clinical test for this would be to move the central portion of the eyelid six millimeters or more away from the eye and then to release and if it does not snap snug into its normal position then this is a sign of lid laxity thirdly the retractor muscles can weaken. Now the retractor muscles are, muscles are attached to the tarsal plate which have a contractive and pulling force therefore pulling the the central region of the eyelid inwards and due to the the nature of the tarsus the, the outer portion naturally will bulge outwards but in the case of weakening of this muscle the the connection or the force the pulling force to the tarsal plate weakens and therefore the central portion begins to move outwards resulting in the outer portion moving in and the eyelashes making contact with the cornea now some of the symptoms that a patient can complain of is a red eye epiphora watering which is watering of the eye a foreign body sensation specifically due to the eyelashes contact with the cornea blurry vision especially in long-term cases where the Eyelashes can have an abrasive effect on the cornea, damaging the cornea and thus affecting vision and also general irritation. Some of the clinical signs would be local hyperemia around the palpebral conjunctiva and lid margin. Corneal disturbance, again due to the abrasion of the corneal epithelium and as you mentioned before, lid laxity. And I'd just like to briefly mention some of the treatments that a patient can undergo, specifically the surgical procedures. Uh, we have cauterization, the Fox procedure, the Wise procedure, and shortening of the retractor muscles. Now, the objective that these treatments, most of these treatments will follow, we go back to our original point of how the preceptal region and the pretarsal region uh, are overriding each other. These treatments will seek to to separate and create a barrier between between these two re these two regions and eliminate the overriding and thus correcting the entropion so cauterization in layman's term is burning so burns will be created beneath the eyelashes enough to create scarring which will separate the two regions and also we have the fox procedure which is a, a triangular base down excision over the palpebral conjunctiva and tarsal plates
here. And also we have the WISE procedure, which is basically a full, full thickness horizontal split of the lower lids which again separates the two regions and also and it is also sealed with an everting suture which physically corrects this in the inversion and also the effect that has is it transfers the pull and contractive force that the retractor muscle has on the tarsal plate to the orbicularis oculi and skin thus allowing the retractor muscle to increase its pull on the central portion of the lid and allowing the outer portion of the lid to return back into its uh, everting or uh, outward bulging position. And finally, uh, we have the shortening of the retractor muscles. Now, this is a primary procedure. However, it can be used in cases where the entropin is recurring even after a procedure such as the WISE procedure. So the retractor muscle is shortened, tightening the pull on the tarsal plate and pulling the central portion of the eyelids inwards and thus allowing the eyelids, the outer portion to move away from the globe and the eyelashes to turn away from the cornea. And hopefully in the next video I'd like to discuss cicatricial entropion, which is entropion as a result of scarring uh, on the eyelid region. So thank you very much for watching.